Well, well, well. It's that time of the week, guys. Uh, been a rough morning. Uh, I was up um, last night for quite a while thinking about the new Batman movie. That, that, oh man, that movie was epic. But here we are again, Twitch. Let's see, I'm look, I'm pulling up my reference right now. How's everyone doing in the chat? What's up, Weebs? I didn't even know that was you. Man, third episode, huh? This is nuts. I just can't believe that I'm this consistent right now because I've managed to do it like three weeks in a row now. So we'll, we'll see how it goes in here in a bit. But today's topic is going to be uh, art plus business equals money. I wasn't going to make like a bullet points or anything, but I just made w just a small one just so that way I don't forget my talking points. It's, it's tough. Like being an artist, like I said, it's like you got to be, you know, a jack of all trades, I guess, if, if you're an artist. So, but today while I talk about art and business in general, I'm going to do something that I've never done on camera before. Usually when I go live, there's usually already uh, a baseline on the paintings and my I've already plotted the lines. You know, I usually don't do a lot of sketching. That's what I'm saying. It's that I would only do certain lines, certain shapes, just to kind of compose the image the way where I want the characters to be. Today, what I'm going to do is actually sketch them for you. So that way, while I talk about art and business, you guys could still see. Because I feel like when I, the past couple of weeks when I was painting, I see that I barely do any painting when I talk. So this week, I'm going to do something different where I would be drawing rather than painting. So we'll see if I can be more productive that way. But like I said, I don't usually do sketches. But I think for this particular belt, it's perfect. Because I think sketching it first would be a whole lot easier for me to do because it's gonna be an entire scene telling a you know a completely different story there are a lot of important things here that I don't want to forget while I'm painting so that's what I'm gonna do today uh, what's up weeps uh, just waking up my daughter my daughter has all her birthday toys oh dude that's awesome that's a great day for her man congratulations to her yeah tell her um, happy birthday and shout out to uh, weeps daughter that's awesome, man. I bet I bet she's spoiled. All right, let's go. So this is going to be uh, a League of Legends belt. No, it's not from the Arcane series, but it is from the League of Legends. I'm paint uh, right. I'm paint. I'm supposed to be painting Yasuo. Elder Dragon, Yone, and a whole bunch of other sceneries. So let's get this started. Today I'm gonna start by drawing some outlines and some just basic shapes just to get Yasuo started. Let me uh, zoom out a bit. So for Yasuo, obviously for a human figure like him, we're gonna try to do a basic circular shape like this. Okay. Just kind of understanding where he's supposed to be facing. So he's facing this way. Okay, so his nose is going to be about right here. But the ear is going to be around somewhere here. Just plotting each, um, each point. See, I'm already messing up. So, because I'm not, I'm not usually used at doing sketches first. All right. Yeah, what's up, Opie? Glad to see you here, man. So, OP uh, is the client for this belt that I'm painting right now. So, he's gonna see the entire process from beginning to uh, start, or from the beginning to end. So, all right, let's 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 get this started. So, right now we got him facing this way. Got the neck areas, upper back. So he's supposed to be doing some kind of a uh, stance and fighting stance uh, position. Uh, you got the V shape for his back. Very, he's a very slender man. Um, so, but 
from what I can see right now, you already you can already tell that he needs to be a bit smaller than this because now I'm over his waist is over here, so I need to bring that up a bit more. So I'm gonna use some um, my gummy erasers. Hey, what's up, F not? Alright, yeah, so what do I do when I mess up? That's that's literally all I do, I just erase them. So, we're going to make his head a bit smaller. Yeah, a lot smaller because there's not a whole lot of space, uh, vertical space on the belt. So, yeah. To, to ensure that we can show all of his body, we're going to make sure that uh, his head is small to make it proportion. Uh, Weeps Rising said uh, OP is gonna be critiquing me all the way. Yeah, I know he critiques me all the time, bro. So yeah, this is gonna be even more. <laughs> so yeah, so the main topic right now is art plus business equals money. So like, I know uh, with some of my artist viewers, they always ask me like, dude, how do you make money from your art? How do you make money doing customizing, selling art, blah, 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 you know, all, all the basics. Um, well, there's not really, the best way I could answer that is it, just to start us off with the main topic is that it, there's really not a straight path to victory if if you catch my drift. Uh, everyone's path is different and everyone's gonna be making money from different ways. So, but like just case in point, for example, me, right? I didn't really get a lot of traction from painting shoes. Let me know if the music's too loud. But yeah, when I was starting out, man, I didn't really get any traction uh, painting shoes. It, it, it didn't really start, the clients didn't really start pouring in until I started painting weightlifting belts. That's why you see me painting a lot of weightlifting belts now is because that's pretty much like 95% of the time people will ask me to paint them belts rather than shoes. So, um, but I, I did started customizing shoes though, because that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I love anime, you know, I did a lot of anime shoes, but you know, life, life has a funny way of, of, you know, guiding and showing you and I, I've, I've done dozens of shoes before and no, nobody cares, right? And then I do one weightlifting belt, and all of a sudden that hit like 6.7 million views or something, and it's it's wild, man. I'm still I'm still trying to get over all that attention because with the only with that one video right now, I can see myself like I'd be painting belts all year this year. I'm not complaining about that, but that's just a good example of, like I said, <laughs> just the universe just messing up, messing with you. Sometimes in life you don't usually get what you want, but you know if you keep pushing, if you keep finding a way, if you keep experimenting and finding what works and find you know doing what works and knowing the signs and capitalizing on those successes then you'll you'll be successful uh, the music is fine uh, I think the belts have more potential than the shoes honestly um, so speaking of art and business yeah I can definitely agree with weebs that the belts have more potential uh, like like I said before from the past streams is that the uh, the fitness community is a multi-billion dollar industry okay and I mean compared to the sneaker community I mean sneaker community is huge but 
the fitness community is larger. So there's a piece of the pie for everyone. You know, there's not a shortage of supply and demand. Unlike the sneaker community, there's a lot of supplies, whereas there's not as much demand. Because a lot of people that are into uh, sneakers usually only go to a few people to get their shoe painted, restored, or customized. Especially there's you know with a lot of bigger guys out there now, uh, you know, and then you get a lot of um, beginners trying to trying to paint shoes as well. So you're competing not only with a lot of the well-established uh, sneaker artists, you're also competing with a lot of up-and-coming artists. Everyone wants to paint shoes. Everyone, everyone wants to paint vans. Everyone wants to paint uh, Air Force ones. But um, what they don't realize is there's more out there than just shoes. And I quickly realized that when I painted a weightlifting belt, and then it went viral. And I'm like, this is insane. It's a weightlifting belt, like. People really care that much for a weightlifting belt and I was like at that point I was like well I really want to paint shoes you know like it's that's my thing but then I just swallowed my pride and I'm just like okay well people want weightlifting shoes and that's what's paying the bills right now so I just leaned more into that and so this year you're gonna see me do a lot of you know art and creative uh, products for uh, the fitness community you know would still you know do, using my art as a as a vessel as a, as a way to deliver those products but what I quickly realized is the difference between weightlifting and the sneaker heads so a lot of times the sneaker heads don't usually work out and most of the time people who do wear the weightlifting belt are not into the you know sneaker game so you might find a few that are into both, then you know you get lucky that way, but most of the time it's not the case. Oh yeah, that shirt's looking good out there. <laughs> just just a plug. You can buy this shirt on my uh, on my website, by the way. Just doing a plug. That's another thing. It's the differentiation, right? Like it's there's thousands if not millions of sneaker artists out there and the reason why I stood out is because I started painting weightlifting belts and obviously it's totally different so that's what gained a lot of attention um, I'm seeing right now there's a lot of people uh, doing weightlifting belts too so uh, a lot of people have always have been asking me too how I how I paint belts so it, it's gaining some traction too so, but it's really important to be first in the market. If you can separate, if you can separate yourself from the other artists, be you know whether it be style, whether it be form factor, or whether it be um, something totally different, you know anything that can make you stand out, I would suggest doing that too. If you're just getting started, you know what I mean. Um, my second bullet point here it says uh, artists were kind of stuck doing things on, uh, on our own and that's more about like being a, a jack of all trades kind of guy being an artist is it's all fun and games until you started taking it seriously right because what happens sometimes is that when when we decide to take our art seriously and take it to the next level we realize there's so many things to do we realize that okay to be able to run a completely sustainable business, I must do this certain things. And you get to a point that a lot of the times you're not even paying attention about art anymore. You're just doing business stuff. And then instead of doing 50% art and 50% business, you're now ended up doing 90% business all the time. Because believe it or not, a lot of creative process, a lot of art, being success successful as an artist has nothing to do I mean it does but like very I mean it's it's subjective but a lot of it has to do with networking because there's like I said there's plenty of talented artists out there right so what separates you what advantage do you have others well networking is huge knowing the right people right I'm always being a, a firm believer of it's not about what you know it's who you know so there's a lot of um, 
artists out there that gains a lot of success because of their network okay talent aside whether they're skilled or good or not that's very subjective but i do know a lot of artists that have gone on to becoming you know some of the most successful artists i know not because of their art per se it's because of their connection and who they know and who would promote them and who who they have in their circle you know what i mean that's just facts of life kids just facts on facts all right it's not about what you know it's about who you know you you're you'll be lucky like i don't i don't blame him man like if you if you're one of those kids guys uh you know artists that that knows somebody important I would not blame you one bit for using that connection because I'd do the same thing. You know what I mean? Like why why not take advantage of your connection? If you know someone important that can boost, give you a boost in your career and or um, exposure, do it. What are you waiting for? You know, like that's, ain't that why you became an artist? Because you want to be well known. You want to make money. I haven't even gone on to uh, addressing the money issues too so it's tough man especially if you have a day job like if you're an artist and if you have a day job it's really hard to get a leg up against your competition because sometimes a lot of the times you're keep competing with a lot of these young uh, men and women who are just getting into art and they have no jobs they are supported by their parents so you're already fighting an uphill an uphill battle and then you all of a sudden you got to compete with the up and comers who they have one they have nothing to lose two uh their parents is their you know supplier you know what i mean like fin financier i guess and uh they have nothing they don't have to worry about money so what ends up happening is that they're able to be more flexible and be more creative on what they do so I, a lot of the times when I see artists getting started is what they do is um, they would do custom shoes for other people at a very, very cheap price. Okay. Yeah. Like Weaves is saying they undercharge a lot. And I see that all the time from people who has one, a day job or need money or need supplies and all this. So they can get started. They undercharge, right? I also see that a lot on like the most the more privileged people too like sometimes they do it for free so they can gain some clout so once they start getting some clout they start charging more so this is why if you're already privileged with connections and money you don't care about money as much so what these people would do is they would undercharge and they would sometimes do the work for free especially they'll give it to other influencers because of their connections they have access to those kind of people to advertise for them and i've always been a big proponent of saying hey don't give anything for free under no circumstances don't do any free work especially to any of these influencers you know because if they have this so-called millions of followers then they should be able to afford your art right but what ends up happening is that they take advantage of the situations and their privilege. And so what ends up is they get they end up giving more exposure to the guy who's giving it for free. And then once that guy gets all kinds of clout, then that's when they start charging more. And that's how they get a leg up from their competition. So now because now they use once they get the clout, they get, you know, they gain more followers in the process. And what ends up happening is that they you they end up using the they end up using their followers as a leverage for another project and so that's how then you all of a sudden they start charging crazy crazy amount of money right because they have the leverage art and business is brutal i'm like a baby you know what i mean compared to all of these established artists and i'm i'm still learning my way through I feel like I'm in a dark forest and I feel like I'm just rummaging around the bushes. The the art world is crazy. It's it's very political. It's a dog eat dog world out there and you don't you don't even know who to trust anymore most of the time. But if you do find people within your small circle that you can trust, lean on to them. Use them as, you know, as networking. Use them as, you know, as a mental guide, as a 
you know, just to kind of grow your, your mental state. A lot of this game about art is all about mental. It's, it's not about, you know, obviously it's not very physical, but everything has to do with being very tactical and precise with your decision making. Oh, man, I gotta drink more coffee. I feel like I'm talking a lot. So yeah, I, I always get off topic, man. I would get this, I would do this, you know, I would have this big one general topic to talk about. And most of the time I don't even go off my bullet points. I just talk about what I, talk, what I, what I wanna talk about, right? Because a lot of this stuff, a lot of stuff that I say comes from experience. It comes from my own knowledge. It comes from what I know. You know what I mean? Like this is not something I get that I get from a textbook and I'm just like regurgitating the words and just teaching you guys. I'm just basically talking out of my own experience and sharing you what I know and what I've learned from being a customizer. This is why I started doing art and coffee is to just basically to keep me leveled. It's to keep me humbled and it keep me sane because if I'm just cooped up in my studio all week long without talking to anyone, without talking about my creative process, my experiences, I would go crazy. I would go completely nuts. I just hope at least one person learns from this experience and learns from it, from my mistakes. And hopefully they can do better in life than what I've been doing. So if only one person can learn from this, then I would be happy, tremendously happy. So right now, what you see me doing here is I'm basically just drawing the tree from the back and just laying down plot points for the the final uh, fight or something. So I'm just gonna add some clouds. Uh, there's supposed to be some leaves falling, you know, everywhere. I've never played League of Legends, but when I was talking to OP about this, OP is my client for this belt. But me and him, we we talk on FaceTime for like two hours, just coming up with this uh, concept. I just can't believe how big and how like just how massive the world of League of Legends is. It's it's insane. I'm I'm kind of um, tempted to play that now actually because I just see all these different characters, different creatures. Kind of reminds me of Diablo, but in I mean Diablo is more into the Dungeons and Dragons kind of stuff, but then it's like League of Legends. It's I don't know. It's something totally different, man. I can't put my I haven't played it, so I can't really describe it as good. But it's it's amazing. Like I I really want to try playing that. If I have time, I would definitely play it because I'm I'm totally in love with these characters. Like he showed me a 10 minute video of the what do you call it, the Kin of Blood Stain Blade or something like that, and. The fight scenes, the animations, it's just off the wall, off the charts, man. Very honored to work on this belt right now. Yeah, it's not anime like you guys always want me to do, but dude, I am so stoked of doing this belt because it's, you know, it's something different, something I've never done before. All right, let's look at my next bullet point. Let's talk about the next topic. Yeah, so as artists, we wear many hats, right? So like me, you. To be an independent artist, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to know business. You got to know Microsoft Word, Excel. You got to know taxes. You have to know how to create a website. You got to, I mean, not the entire codes or not to do codes or, or anything. I don't use, you know, I, I use a service for my website, but I do very little codes. But I want, what I'm saying is that there's so many things you got. There's so many hats you got to wear as an independent artists to be a successful artist you also have to be an influencer all right it goes hand in hand it's like peanut butter and jelly right you can't have one or just the other you gotta have both because if you are not an influencer as an artist then you're not selling art unless you're like you know Banksy or anybody all some of those old school artists that are just already famous you know before the social media age but nowadays you can't be a successful artist without being a, an influencer or or attaining some kind of fame okay let me rephrase the word influencer to fame you have to be like when I was starting out being an artist I did not want to be famous I just want to be known for my art and do art charge money for it and pay my bills but 
right now I have no choice but to put my face on social media and to you know keep up with the presence and keep up with the appearance so that way that way I can keep the strain going right because fame and art goes hand in hand I cannot if no one if nobody knows who I am I'm not gonna be selling not one belt okay so that's why you gotta be a social media influencer too if you don't have a photographer friend who does it for free you gotta you gotta know at least the basic of photography all right I went to film school so that kind of goes hand in hand with my business so I know the basic of videography and um, photography so that that I'm using that to my own advantage kind of like I'm telling you guys if you have a different set of skills please incorporate that to what you're doing if you're really good at another skills like let's say if you're really good at filmmaking incorporate that into your art or actually why aren't you doing film so uh rich you're making me show my face for your podcast guess that will be the beginning of my game there you go see weebs is over here watching me right now and it's taken me about almost a year of convincing him to show his face okay weebs is a is a tiktok famous artist okay if you if you go check out his TikTok, his name is Weebs Rising, all right? He has over 100,000 followers on TikTok, and he does, like, glass art, leather art, and all that stuff, but he never showed his face. So, it, and it now it's taking me a few months, it's almost a year to actually, like, convince him to show his face. Anyways, we got 20 minutes left. I'm going to start drawing. So, like I said, wear many hats, right, as an artist. Hey, what's up, Mashi? What's up, what's up? Shout out to Greece. So we got a lot of... Our, our chat is full of talented people, man. We got Weebs who do glass and leather art. We got Dr. Eyebrow who's an auteur, poem, poet, um, illustrationist. I mean, crazy, crazy illustrations with King. That's why it's called The Inking. Uh, Mashi, another glass artist, which is tremendously amazing, you know, artist when it comes to anime and, you know, beautiful line work and all that stuff. And I see we also have Leslie here in the chat. She is a great, great acrylic artist. So she does a lot of beautiful, you know, relief sculptures with um, acrylic. So if you all could check out people in the chat, go follow each other or something. All right. So this is what it's all about. This is what the community I'm trying to build. I know I'm off topic right now, but like I see a lot of good artists in the chat. It'll be a waste of it'd be a waste of opportunity if I don't at least uh, give everyone here a shout out. Uh, but right now I'm just laying the sides for the dragon. Oh yeah, plus it keeps them talking. See now they're they're saying thank you in the chat, so it brings me more engagement. So, <laughs> so. anyways, yeah. So just to recap, right? wear many hats you also gotta learn how to do videography you also have to learn photography now you don't have to do all of that once you get big obviously once you get big and when you can afford to pay other people for their specific skills then you can actually just focus on the creative side of the business i'm actually to a point now where I don't have to worry as much with the business administrative side of things. Um, I'm to a point now where I've actually hired a manager to help me deal with clients, uh, emails, uh, brand deals, um, uh, interviews. I mean, all, all, all kinds of stuff that deals with administrative things. Uh, my manager takes care of all that for me from uh, invoicing to scheduling to, I mean, pretty much everything she's like a um, a swiss army knife uh, when it comes to that and then what i'm doing right now is focusing on all creative side of the business where i'm over here doing social media photography videography uh showing my face drawing you drawing for you guys all that kind of stuff all right i got in trouble one time because uh well, that's a that's a story for another day but apparently i'm not i'm not very good at talking to customers so i just let my manager uh take care of all that for me because that's what she specializes in you know what i mean so I, like i said as a business owner you don't you don't have to know everything you just have to have enough capital to pay for to pay uh to pay other people and you can hire them for their specific skills yeah that's what i was trying to say 
I need to uh, right now we're doing good in that level but obviously we want to strive to get to another level where at some point I would have someone doing all the uh, videography photography for social media and all that kind of stuff so but we're not at that level yet you know what I mean like I'm honest about my business and I don't I don't pretend like I'm this super talented successful artist because I'm not you know what I mean? There's there are good months and there are bad months. There are days that I get a lot of clients. There are days where I basically don't get any clients, and that's another that's another topic for another day, man. That's that's just the nature of the beast. When the economy is doing good, when people have extra disposable income, they will spend it on something that they want. And you have to be ready to take on that challenge. You have to be ready, you know, you have to be ready to stand out amongst your peers to collect that money from your uh, potential clients. You know what I mean? Because uh, clients, they don't wait for you. You know what I mean? They they see what's out there and they if, if they see something that stands out for them, that's where they go. Um, so always always be ready always be uh making sure that your business is you know up to scale and up you know ready to take on any challenges at moment's notice because you never know when it's gonna come and i'll just leave you with this um hard work and consistency will always beat talent okay Hard work and consistency will always beat talent. You can have the most amazing talent in the world, but if you're lazy as hell, you're not going to go anywhere. I believe, I truly believe, I have one of the most, one of the best, you know, I truly believe that I am one of the best, one of the best skilled artists in the world. I know that for sure and I believe that for sure but if I don't work hard for it if I don't show it if I don't produce the work that I believe that I can that I can do then whatever I believe will not matter it it's all about perception right perception is reality and what people see on your social media pages, on your output, anything you put out there, that's all that's people going to see. That's how they'll judge you. Okay. If you are a really, really good artist with good fundamentals, good composition, all that, but you consistently, consistently put out crap, people are going to think of you as a crap artist. You know what I mean? Like it, that's just the logic behind it your your belief does not matter it's it's what you do and what you produce that's ma that's what matters mashi says she feels called out <laughs> oh man well stay longer i'll call you out even more <laughs> now i'm just kidding uh we've said i like how you sketch very loose you even hold your pencil like a paintbrush bro like I'm not used to be honest with you I'm not used to uh, holding a pencil anymore <laughs> um, a lot of my uh, pencil strokes now are so loose because it's been a hot minute it's been I don't know it's been quite a while since I actually sketched something out I'm gonna have to go back and actually draw something in detail and actually get back into it because I don't want to lose that touch I don't want to you know Drawing and painting are two completely different uh, set of skills. All right, so you don't want to lose that. And I feel like my drawing skills are are starting to diminish because I've been painting a whole lot more. And like I said, I'm, I'm I came from the school of Bob Ross where everything is done in an easy way 
lazy way you know if we could do something if we could paint something in one or two steps then that's what we'll do okay if i can paint a tree in one or two strokes then that's what we'll do all right so the school of bob ross taught me how to become a lazy artist so <laughs> here i am just talking about quality and just talking about you know putting out good content but yeah dude it's it's crazy all right i'm gonna sketch this army soldiers I'm not looking for anything specific. I'm more looking for shapes. Uh, at this stage of the belt, this is more about composition. This is more about plotting out uh, key characters and key subjects. Um, um, uh, what was it? The, man. I, mm. I had a long night, all right? Batman was, the Batman was three hours long. What the hell? It's a good movie, yeah. But it's three hours long, man. What the hell? That 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 movie should have been at least, at maximum, two hours. It, it didn't need to be that long, man. Like, it's really good. It's really good. But every time, like, no spoilers, I'm not going to spoil anything. But every time I feel like the movie is over, another thing happens. It's like, okay, I thought you caught the bad guy. Like, it, it's like, it's a, detect, it's, a, it, it's a detective noir story and plot points and, like, secrets. You know, like, no spoilers or anything. But, like, I'm just going to say that don't drink a lot of water. And go use the bathroom before you go to watch the Batman, all right? Because I was I was miserable in that three hours, all right? I had to leave one time because I had to go to the bathroom, okay? Because, yeah, all I'm going to say is that once you think the movie is over, it's not, okay? So, yeah, Mashi likes Cranky Rich. She likes, she only watch me uh, when I'm cranky, so, like... <laughs> Oh man, what was I? What we're talking about? We're talking about art and business, not Batman. Jeez, I know, right? I'm over here uh, just wasting time. Um, so we're gonna talk about gallery or being independent. Uh, no, we'll save that for another topic because that's a whole other beast. So right, I'm an in I call myself independent artist because I'm not affiliated with any galleries or anything or museums or anything like that. Um, I would say, uh, here's another bullet point. I would say is picking a niche. Picking a niche is uh, de definitely important. So, um, I have chosen a niche where it's categorized as customizer. You can even, you can even do a sub niche for that. Let's say my niche right now is customizing. What do I customize? I customize on leather products such as sneakers, belts, um, you know, headphones. I've done headphones. Uh, I'll be doing more headphones before. Um, wood, all kinds of stuff, right? Custom art. But you can do. You can also do a sub niche where all you're doing is literally sneakers. I've seen a lot of people. They don't do nothing else but paint on shoes. They don't want to paint belts. They don't want to paint canvas. They don't want to paint nothing else. They just want to paint shoes. And that works for them. You know what I mean? Picking the niche definitely works. Um, and I get it. It sucks. It kind of it kind of push you into a corner creatively because as an artist, you always want to create and experiment with other stuff. Um, but in terms of business, niching down works. Because when I started just niching, like just focusing on belts, my sales went through the roof. Okay, if I'm going, if I'm jumping up and down, hey, let me do shoes, let me do headphones, let me do this. I'm not going to sell as much belts as I, as I do now because people are going to think, okay, that's the guy who paints the headphones. I don't know sure if he can paint belts. You know what I mean? Like, but if you're the guy, if you're the guy who does the belt, then that's what you're known for. People are going to come to you for that, that specific thing. And that kind of brings me back to um 
standing out from uh, your peers and your competition. So picking a niche, there you go. There's even a sub niche below a sub niche, all right? Like I said, you can be a customizer or you can be a sneaker customizer or I do have friends who does this. They only paint anime on shoes. How specific is that, right? So that's a sub niche on a sub niche, okay? And they are extremely successful for it because why? They're Because their target is very, very focused to the anime community. Yeah, some of those might not be sneakerheads, but a lot of those a lot of those people love anime and they are more than willing to try to buy a pair of shoes with anime on them because they love anime. You know what I mean? Like weebs um not weebs rising, but like weebs anime lovers in general. Um they love merch, man. We love t-shirts, we love anime gear, we love posters, anime art anything that represent our love of anime we will buy and pay for it that's why a lot of art uh, sneaker artists have started to even niche down to only doing uh, anime because anime is gaining so much popularity right now and that's the importance of picking a niche taxes uh profit margin yeah well <laughs> We'll save that for some other time because gallery, taxes, profit margin. Yeah, we'll save all that for the, uh, a few next episodes. So what I'm trying to do, we have about five minutes left. So I'm going to continue drawing this. But um, I guess for my closing statements, um, I'm just going to leave you with this. I'm not sure if if, if, we'll, if it will happen next week, but I'm trying to bring guests in the in, in the live stream. So, art and coffee is all about um, art and coffee is all about creating art and hanging out with your friends while drinking coffee. All right, that's the whole point of this stream. So next week. I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of it, but next week I'm going to try to bring a friend or two to kind of stream with me and we'll kind of we'll divide the, the screen into multiple screens and um, they might not show their faces, but they will show the work that they're work. Uh, they'll, they'll show uh, the artwork that they're currently working on. So we're, we're all going to have a screen. Um, and we'll be all working together and be talking about uh, the main topic. I don't know what the main topic of next week will be uh, yet, but I think it's it's gonna be. If I'm bringing in other artists in the stream, it's going to be about styles. So I think that's a good way to talk about their art, talk about my art, and share some tips to you guys uh, if we talk about different styles. And a lot of them are gonna be anime artists. So a lot of my anime lovers here should tune in for next week. Um, but no promises though. We're still trying to figure out the logistics. Um, cause technology wise, I still have not figured out Twitch at all. So I, it's not like going live. Like if I go live on TikTok and people can do at me or guests, or if I go live on Instagram, people can go live with me. It's not that easy. So I got to figure out how to do it on Twitch. So give, if you give me a, your patience, then I'll, I'll deliver you some of the most talented artists out there all right but um let me show you guys one last bit here before i go there we go but yeah that'll do it guys it's 10 o'clock that's insane i i can't believe i talk like this you know for an hour every every week man it, it's nuts um also I, I i i i i was actually more productive today than the last couple of weeks because last couple of weeks i did more talking than 
actual painting but this time i feel like i've made a lot of progress because if you can see i've sketched out and composed the entire belt while talking while sharing my experiences sharing my knowledge and talking to you guys about the process of the belt so hopefully next week i'll be further along next week you'll see that there's going to be more uh, by next week i um i expect to get yasuo done um but this week i'm also trying to stream more than once a week it's not going to be called art and coffee it's just going to be a live stream where all i'm going to be doing is painting and talking about the art itself no other main topics so if you're into that kind of stuff if you don't want to hear me talk a lot just go just you know check out my uh twitch uh this week because i'll be painting more I'll be painting more than talking, all right? Because I know a lot of you guys just want me to shut shut up and just keep painting. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I'll do. Um, but for art and coffee, it's mostly talking. Uh, it's not a podcast, okay? I'm not claiming it to be a podcast, but I just want it to be a stream where I talk about art in general, or me and my friends talk about art, and everyone is welcome to join. But that'll do it, guys. I'm gonna say I'm just gonna say goodbye, and have a good weekend. Peace.